Hey, what is up, guys? This is Corp. You guys asked for it, and here it is, man. The ultimate artifact set to your list for Red Shadow Legends in 2024. Let's do this, man. Starting off with the most vanilla of vanilla, the good old accuracy set, which I'm just going to happily slam at the top of B tier. I think it's a really, really good set in the first, like, six months or so of your account until you start to build up a good stockpile of perception gear, which is just such a... Such a solid and flat hop-up from the accuracy gear that it starts to become obsolete kind of quickly. That said, accuracy is obviously so, so important and, you know, it's only a two-piece, nice and versatile, that I do feel like it has quite a bit of value. Next up, Affinity Breaker, which, ooh, I'm gonna have to go ahead and slam it in C tier, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. It does, however, mean that it is very, very niche, right? Phantom Shoguns. Obviously, the boss is going to be placing unavoidable enfeebles on your highest crit damage champion on your team. And so having Affinity Breaker so that you can still land some big crits um, and convert those weak hits into crits is going to be quite useful. Also, can find some use as well going into, I guess, Iron Twins um, because the affinity is changing for that boss all the time. And so it can help out if you're building out a champ specifically for those roles. Beyond that... Very, very niche indeed. I have heard of some people using Affinity Breaker on things like Ninja going into Hydra. Um, just if you're lacking other damage dealer options and stuff and you want to be able to use Ninja into any Hydra rotation just to avoid those weak hits. But I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of an edge case. Maybe I'm underrating Affinity Breaker. Let me know what you guys think. Next up, we've got Curing, which I feel like maybe I'm overrating by also putting it in C tier. But I do feel like it's a decent flat upgrade to just very, very heal heavy champs. And it's their only job is to provide healing, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, man. Am I being too kind with Curing? Maybe it's an easy silver just auto sell. Uh, kind of set for some people. I'm going to sneak it in just at the bottom of C tier because, frankly, I don't think it's really comparable in how crappy it is compared to something like a life set, which you best believe. In fact, I'm just going to skip ahead to the life set and just drop it in the easy silver. That's the kind of tier of crappy gear that's going to appear in the easy silver uh, tier, just to clarify. Okay, man. Next up, we have good old Avenging. Well, not good old. It's actually pretty goddamn rubbish. Oh, God. You know what? Does it just go into the easy silver tier? But then doesn't curing also go there? Ah, screw it. I'm going to stick with my guns, man. Stick to my guns. But yeah, I'm going to place Avenging in easy silver. Feels like crap to me. 45% chance uh, on being debuffed of counterattacking. But it feels like any champ that does want to counterattack and has a strong A1 probably doesn't want to go a full set Avenging set just to give them that chance to counterattack. They probably want to be doing actual damage uh, with their skills, you know, so... I don't know, man. It it just feels too too cumbersome, too clunky. Uh, I've never seen anybody use an avenging set ever. Actually, then again, have I ever actually seen anybody use a curing set either? Probably not. Hey, man. Speaking of curing, speaking of healers, goddammit, If you're looking to set up a new raid Shadow Legends account and you're looking for one of the best healers in the game, then sign up to, with my promo link down below at the top of the video description. Or as soon as that account hits level 25, you're gonna unlock a copy of Rector Dreth completely for free, man. You'll also pick up a Tagore as well as your account goes past level 15. So it's just one of the best beginner promo links going. So if you are looking to start a new raid, ac uh, raid account, then that link is the way to do it. Or if you know a friend who's looking to join you in raid, for example, direct them to that link, man. It's a damn good one. All right, man. Back to the tier list. All right. Next up, we've got good old Bloodthirsty, which is basically a lifesteal set with some bonus crit attached. I'm going to go ahead and slam that in B tier as well. I think similar to accuracy, you're going to find a good amount of use for lifesteal sets more in the first like six months of your account. Then after that, they're going to fall off quite quickly. You just find champs that have enough sustain on their own. They don't need the lifesteal. Yeah, I mean, that's it really, to be honest. Next up, we've got Bolster, which is going to be our first... Um, major Forge Pass set. I think I'm going to go ahead and clock this one in S tier and reserve the S plus tier all the way up at the top, by the way, for just the absolute Giga Chad sets. Stone skin, let's be real, you know. And and sets that are just so, so good that they're not really... Uh, you just can't pass them up, you know. Bolster, I think, is way up there at the top of S tier. I'm not going to go ahead and put it in S plus. I'm going to reserve S plus for those, uh, for those real biggies, man. But Bolster, obviously, very, very good indeed. Big protected shields. Um, fantastic into arena. Also get 10% healing on whatever champ is wearing the Bolster set every single turn. Yeah, it's just a great, great set. Next up, Critical Strike Chance. I think this one probably goes into C tier. I don't think it's quite uh, an auto sell. Again, at least super, super early on in the game where you're still struggling to meet certain stat checks on champs and you're struggling to hit maybe 100% crit on some of your nukas. 
um, or like your armages, for example, you know, where having 100% crit chance is really, really important early on. And it's kind of tough to do until you get better quality gear. Then at least the crit gear can do a little bit of work for you. Yeah, falls off very, very quickly. Probably, probably easy silver for most people, but I'm going to be nice. <laughs> okay, next up, and good old crit damage. I think this is going to fit snugly into the A tier, mostly because it's a two-piece set. Nice and versatile, right? Can just kind of fill in on your Nuka champs and fill up their gear slots. Um, with that 20% extra bonus crit damage. Yeah, the fact that it's a two-piece is really, really good. I think that it's a solid filler set uh, to slot into the A tier that you can get use out of quite far into the game, again, as a filler set, right? Not bad. Next up, Cruel. Yeah. Cruel has got a joint bolster in S tier. It's just got to. Extra crit. Uh, sorry, extra attack percentage, rather. A little bit of armor penetration. It is also a two set, of course. So it's got those extra versatility points. And um, yeah, just with how accessible it is too from Clan Boss. Yeah, Cruel is really, really good. Cursed. Also, 50% chance to apply Hex uh, on attack, right? Put it on a good AoE Nuka into something like Hydra. Hex is all over the place. Hex is basically a mandatory debuff going into Hydra. So if you are lacking a mass Hex spreading champion in a given Hydra team, just slam one of your goddamn AoE champs in a Hex set and problem solved, right? Very, very good set indeed, given how important Hydra is. Uh, yeah, I think it's well, well deserving of S tier for that reason. Now we go to the least useful set in the game. Good old days. I think this is actually worse than Life Gear. I'm gonna go out on a limb, dude. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is probably the worst set in the game. 25% chance to land a sleep debuff. Are you kidding me? Even if it was like a 50% chance of landing sleep debuff, it would probably still suck. That's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Not good. Next up, and the defense set. I think this one also probably, I mean, it's probably a little bit ahead of life set, I guess, in the easy silver tier, if you want to be exacting about this, but 10% defense. It is a two set set, so that's good at least. It's decent filler, but only for the first few months of your account and you start unlocking uh, resilience gear in the forge, right? As soon as you're getting resilience gear, it's doing what defense does and what life set does all in one. Um, it's really quite accessible, and yeah, so your defense gear becomes obsolete very, very quickly indeed. Next up, man, set of the ram. Good old Defiant, probably gonna make it into S tier, to be honest. It's a two-piece, it provides 10% defense, so it already does what the defense set does. And you also get 15% reduced damage taken on AoE attacks, right? So against any boss, Ice Golem Hard, for example, big Ice Golem hits that are coming in, all of them are AoE damage. All of them are basically unavoidable against Ice Golem. Yeah, Defiant sets. Excellent, excellent damage mitigation on a two-piece. For that, I mean, just for that unavoidable AoE damage, man. What can I say about it? It's just a very, very good set. So next up, we've got Deflect. This is a little bit of a tough one to judge, to be honest. It is a four-piece, which means it's quite clunky. I think we're going to go ahead and slot it into uh, B tier. It gives, I think plus 20% health, plus 20% defense. So it's, it's again, like one of those combo sets that's quite uh, comparable to resilience. However, you've also got that extra 25% chance of reflecting a debuff when an attacker tries to apply a debuff to your given champ. So it does a little bit extra. That said, quite clunky, and there are much, much better defensive uh, set options. Just a little bit higher up in the tier list, which most of which we haven't actually got to yet, but believe me, they're coming. I think it's fine. Slot it into B tier. You will eventually replace it, however, with better stuff. Next up, man, the destroy set. We're cooking on gas now, boys. Let's actually absolutely blast through these. Destroy set. I think I'm going to slam it in just behind Infinity Breaker, maybe. Um, destroy, of course, is really only required for the most part, for taking on Scarab King in Doom Tower, but you can always just find a really, really good Poisoner champ eventually on your account, and then it kind of becomes completely redundant, right? And you can kill Scarab King through other means, and so it becomes a little bit unnecessary, but for the early game, it has its niche. I think that it's not completely useless. Um, I actually use it on my Armager to help out against Scarab King, and it does just fine for me, so yeah, I think that does warrant a C tier. Next up, and Divine Crit. It's probably in C tier. I mean, if we're going to have Crit in C tier, then I guess Divine Crit also has to be here. You're basically going to get a small HP shield, as well as the crit chance. Um, the small HP shield doesn't really matter for a whole lot, you know. Next up, we've got both Divine Life and Divine Offense. Uh, I think it's called Divine Offense. Yeah, both of these are honestly just... I mean, they're slightly better than the crap, I guess, that's already down here in Easy Silver, but... 
Yeah, they're not a whole lot better. I mean, it's just, it doesn't really matter where we slam these, right? They're both going into easy silver tier. Yeah, they, they, they just give a small HP shield. It's really sort of inconsequential. And then they give crappy stats alongside that. Screw them, ignore them. They're worth nothing, okay? Now, that brings us, however, to Divine Speed, which you might think is also kind of crap. Oh, it's just like the other Divine sets. No, man, Speed is just too good. Speed is just too good, man. I think some folks would actually argue just putting even regular Speed Gear all the way up into S tier. I think I kind of disagree with that. I think that, uh, sorry, the S plus tier. I think that these sets um, are still going to be a little bit of a hop above even regular Speed Gear, but Speed is obviously king in this game, that being said. And yeah, I mean, just... Just going first in things like arena, maxing your speed over the course of longer fights. Those kind of things just cannot be undervalued. Yeah, I think Divine Speed, even though the shield is useless, <laughs> still honestly deserves its place up in S tier. Next up, we've got the Lethal set. Excuse me, not goddamn Lethal. This is the Fatal set uh, from good old... Uh, Magma Dragon in Doom Tower. It gives a little bit of crit rate. It gives a little bit of attack percentage. It is a two-piece, so it has some versatility going for it. I think it probably maybe sneaks in at, like, the bottom of A tier. It's not quite as good as uh, just some good crit damage pieces because it's percentage attack. I mean, you know, I don't know, man. I think it just about sneaks into A tier. It's an okay filler set. Um, Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Next up, we've got the Siege set, the Feral set. Oh, my God, dude. I was so, so tempted to slam this into S+. I don't think I can quite do it. I don't think it quite makes the grade, but it's definitely towards the top end of S tier. I think just for the versatility of it. Of course, it's a variable set. You can equip one piece of the Feral set for 40 accuracy. Crazy as hell. You can equip three pieces of the Feral set for 80 accuracy and 5% speed. Three pieces for basically... Dude... For what otherwise... Oh, oh my god. I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I, I just think it's crazy as hell. It's crazy as hell uh, how versatile this is. If you go up to four pieces, you get the block uh, the block debuffs buff for two turns on combat start. And if you go up to six pieces, you get a 60% chance to block polymorph debuffs. So, I don't know, dude. For those reasons alone, I think you can either stack it. You can just go one or two or three pieces of feral. It can do a hell of a lot of work for you. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Extremely, extremely powerful stuff, man. Really, really like this one. Next up, we've got the Fortitude set. This one is actually really, really good indeed. You get plus 40 resistance and 10% uh, defense. So it's just a big hop up on regular resistance sets. Does it make its way up into S tier? It's probably some of the better resistance gear in the game. That said, there is some plus speed and resistance gear. So maybe this one just makes it into A tier. I think we're going to slot it in at the bottom of S tier. Resistance, of course, if you're building a champ that's going to rely on resistance, then it's going to be an S tier set for you. You know, you're not going to get much better than this. That brings us swiftly on to Frenzy, which is going to join its friend Days at the very bottom of Easy Silver. Uh, 5%, I think it's 5% 10 meter fill on debuff received. Or, or something like something to that effect. Yeah, I just checked it in game. It is my god. Is this bad? My god is this awful and my god does the supersonic variable set which we will get to eventually uh in this tier list just a thirty thousand times better edition uh of the frenzy set when it comes to 10 meter fill like that um next up we've got the good old frost set which i think for a lot of people is going to be at the bottom of easy silver but for me i think that it does have a role in fact i think it's probably worth a bit more than the oh god what the hell am i clicking here dude i think it's worth a little bit more than the uh, crit sets. I think it can find some use on some, I don't know, rare champ AoE provokers that you're running in things like faction wars and secret rooms and, you know, just the wave-based content only where you've got a rare provoker that's got like a four-turn cooldown AoE provoke. Um, it's going to last quite a long time until that thing comes back off of cooldown again. So having the chance to get enemies to attack into that champ and then get frozen and so you're turning a one-turn crowd control into a two-turn crowd control just have at least a little bit of value. That said, Frost Gear is vastly, vastly outperformed by... Is this Frost Bite Gear? I think it's Frost Bite. Frost Bite Gear has the advantage of being a two-set, right? While doing something very, very similar to the regular Frost Gear. So it's just a two-piece that you can throw on there. 10% chance to freeze attackers and 15% chance, I think it is, to dodge 
enemy freeze effects, which is just like a little bonus to throw in there. But yeah, if you've got a champ out there whose only job it is to really be placing AoE provokes, AoE stuns, that kind of thing, you can throw them in a two-piece of a frostbite gear and do just fine with them, especially when comboed up with the, I think it's, oh, what the hell's it called again? The fearsome presence mastery, which gives you an extra 5% chance to land those hard crowd control debuffs with artifacts as well as skills. And so you get a 50% chance to be placing the freeze on just a two-piece of a frostbite gear. I think it's fine as a filler set and does have its role uh, in the game, though it is quite niche. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's versatile enough that it's worth a place. Maybe an A tier, maybe in high B. I'm talking myself into cranking it down just a little bit. I think I'll go ahead and place it in B. Maybe I'm underrating that, man. I don't know. What do you guys think of the good old Frostbite, man? Next up, we've got a set that I'd be really, really curious if anybody's actually making this work. It's, of course, the Fury set. Increase the damage that you're dealing based on HP lost. Feels quite niche to me. I think I'm fine to plant it somewhere like around here, I guess, in the CTR. I've got to be honest, I don't have a single piece of this on my account. It's not by design. I wasn't planning on just getting rid of all of them, uh, but I guess I got rid of all of them. <laughs> so I haven't been keeping any of this, but there you go. Next up, we've got the Guardian set. Some AoE damage mitigation, as well as some consistent healing on whichever champ you have this equipped on. I think this is a pretty easy S tier set. Uh, it's one of those that you want to be keeping an eye out for. Very, very good on just general survivability, what I call backbone of your team style champions. Um, yeah, I think the Guardian set is probably worth the spot all up and on in STMN. It's a good one. Next up, we've got Immortal. That's going to just join uh, straight up here, I guess, somewhere in the middle of STR. Very, very versatile. Once again, it's a two-piece set. Drops from Clan Boss. I guess it should go beside the Cruel set for that reason, right? Um, yeah, just very, very versatile. HP-based champ. Revivers. Those kind of guys, of course, are going to love your Immortal sets, as well as champions that you're building to solo content as well. You can build them in six pieces of Immortal or just, you know, a full set of Regeneration, then two-piece Immortal. Yeah, nice and versatile. Just lovely, lovely stuff. Next up, we have a set that used to be really, really good indeed, but it seems like in recent times, um, before I started playing Raid, it's just been power crep like crazy. That is, of course, the immunity set. I guess it has a role. Um, I'll go ahead and slam it somewhere in the middle of C tier. Uh, it's basically just a giant block, block debuffs, buff set at the start of combat, right? Not bad. Pretty good for what it does. Uh, useful in the PvP and stuff like that, but... Again, quickly replaced by better stuff the further into the game you get. And our man, here we go. It's time for the good old Impulse set. This one's going to go straight up to S+, plus, boys. This set, I, I feel like a while ago, it used to be a four-piece set. And for that reason, people kind of shied away from it a little bit. Yeah, now it's a two-piece. It does exactly the same thing as a speed set, right? So it's a two-piece plus 12% speed. And that already makes it an S-tier contender, you know, simply for that reason alone. However, you also get a 12% chance every turn to reduce the cooldown of a random skill by one turn. Dude, it's a reflex set and a speed set balled into one, right? You equip like a couple sets of these on a champ, they've basically got a like a, a soft reflex set and a full speed set. And it's funny, man, I feel like <laughs> I feel like the only reason people don't automatically say, oh my god, this is the greatest set. You gotta make sure that you just farm the hell out of this goddamn thing. It's going to be so, so useful on basically every kind of champion in the game. The only reason people don't prioritize it is because it's only accessible through Live Arena. <laughs> and nobody likes Live Arena, dude. But I think that even though it sucks to get your hands on this thing, it can't be denied, man. Surely it can't be denied that this is just one of the best sets going in the game, dude. Reflex and speed combined. Like, are you kidding me, man? This is so, so good. It's just a shame how you, you know, get your hands on it, I suppose. And next up, we've got the good old Instinct set. This one is a full set, artifact set. Makes it a little bit more cumbersome to use. However, it is 20% ignore defense as well as, I believe, 10% speed? Or is it 12%? Either way, it's a, bu it's a bunch of speed, ignore 20% of enemy defense. I feel like it's probably... I mean, does it just squeeze in at A tier just because it's a bit more cumbersome? I mean, we're going to get to the Savage set and spoilers, Savage set ignores 25% of enemy defense, but it doesn't give you any plus speed. I think that the Savage set squeezes into S tier, whereas the Impulse set? I don't know, dude. How do you value that trade-off? It ignores a little bit less defense on the Impulse set, but you get that little bit of extra speed bonus. But how much, how much 
is that extra little speed bonus really worth on a nuka as opposed to just doing more damage and just trying to one shot somebody it's really close man i'm really really tempted to just squeeze the impulse gear into the bottom of s tier maybe some people really really rate it man i don't know do you guys actually use the impulse gear do you get a lot of use out of it um obviously in arena maybe it's just much much more valuable to have like a faster nuka in that for that reason i don't know i don't want to overcrowd the s tier too much man i'm gonna keep this at the top of a tier i think but yeah it could definitely be an s tier set i just don't want to you know i just don't want to have like a top heavy tier list at the end of this you know i do want to spread things out uh, and try and differentiate at least a little bit next up we have the killstroke set oh man Dude, I really, really, really want to play as Killstroke in S tier as well, man. It gives plus 20% uh, crit damage, so it's already better than the uh, crit damage set. And you also get an extra 5% speed. Uh, it's a two set, nice and versatile. So it's definitely a hop up from the crit damage. I guess I'll just leave it in like towards the top end of A tier. Oh my god, that's a tough one. I really, really like the Killstroke gear, but yeah, I think that I think that probably just stays in A tier uh, just fine. Next up, man. The lethal set. You guys know where this one's going. It's one of the best damage dealing sets in the game. Uh, you're going to be finding this from Doom Tower against Dark Fear. And yeah, it ignores 25% of enemy defense, just the same as the uh, Savage gear, except you're also getting an extra bonus 10% crit rate from the lethal set. So it's just easier to hit that 100% crit rate on your nukas with lethal. And for that reason, it's just one of the best sets in the game. Uh, more often than not, you're going to be using basically all of your forge champs just to really max up your lethal gear when it comes time to be crafting this in your forge building after farming Dark Fear for the Doom Tower cycle. Yeah, it's one of the really, really good ones. Next, we've got the lifesteal gear. Um, I'm halfway tempted to put this in a B tier just because of how useful it is in the super, super early game. Um, I think it's fine to go at the top of C tier, though. I mean, you don't get any bonus crit from the same, uh, like you do with Bloodthirsty. I guess I'll just go ahead and plant it here. No, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in B tier, man. I'm gonna put it in B tier. I mean, I still use it right now in my campaign farmer. I'm six months in. Uh, maybe I should have a better campaign farmer by now, but, you know. Next up, Merciless and oi, 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 oi. It is time to start hitting the S plus tier stuff, dude. I think Merciless is well up there merciless is incredibly incredibly good is it actually better than lethal i dare say it might be you know yeah so merciless is a variable set and while the uh lethal set will ignore 25 percent of enemy defense you can ignore 35 percent enemy defense with the merciless set you also get the same effects from the reflex set and the relentless set also wrapped up in merciless right so you get a chance for extra turns you get a chance to reduce your own cooldowns as I've already said, you ignore 35% of enemy defense if you stack enough of this. You get bonus crit damage. You even get a little bit of extra speed. It just kind of does everything. It's crazy as hell. Uh, quite difficult to come by. But still, I mean, it's got it's to gotta be an S+. Plus. It's just got to be. Offense set, nice and easy. That's just going to go straight into the crappy bottom tiers as well. It's probably like somewhere around here. They're not that it matters that much. Uh, perception gear, honestly, I'm also going to slam this into S+. Plus purely because it's... It's got to be the most used set in the game. It just has. Speed, accuracy, feels like 70% of the champions in Rage Shadow Legends require accuracy to some extent, and Perception is just such an easy go-to. Ooh, but then how can I have the Siege mode set, the Feral, how can I have the Feral set in S tier, but I can have the Perception set in S plus? Oh god, I'm kind of, I'm kind of throwing myself into a corner here, man. Oh god, screw it, dude, screw it. I'm, I'm doing it, man, I'm putting the Feral set up there, man. Yeah, I'm just going to spread things out a little bit more. I feel like Feral, Feral, Perception, they're very, very comparable. Feral is better in some cases. Perception is better in others. One is very, very hard to get. One is super, super accessible. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll just throw some options in there, man, in the S plus tier. I think that that's totally fine. Next up, the good old Protection set. I think this one wiggles somewhere into the middle of the S tier. It feels like the only thing with Protection is that it really shines the most when you're stacking a lot of pieces, like eight or so pieces, right, to get that or start to work your way towards that 75% protected buff uh, chance. Seems to where it sh uh, really shines the most, which is kind of hard to pull off. It's somewhat difficult to come by, but a little bit more situational as well than the likes of uh, Stone Skin, but still a really, really good set indeed. Next up, this brings us to Provoke. I feel this is probably somewhere around like the middle of A tier ish. It's gotta go somewhere in here, right? It's gotta do. It really just depends if you need a provoke set, of course. Some people on their accounts 
six months in they've already pulled a whole bunch of aoe provokers and having a provoke set on hand just doesn't really matter that much and so yeah i think we'll call this one situationally very very good indeed if you need it next up we've got the reflex set Love this son of a gun. 40% chance every turn to reduce the cooldown of a random skill by one turn. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Of course, outperformed by some of the stuff that's going on already in the S plus tier, but very, very good set indeed. Use this already on a few champions already on my own account, even if my rolls have been kind of bad for it. Next up, regeneration set. Kind of tempted to put this in the top of A tier because it is so, so niche. When do you use the regeneration set really outside of you know, like cheesy solo builds and stuff for dungeons. It's also a little bit less, like, it's much, much less versatile than the likes of the Immortal set as well. I mean, it's really, really good. It's really, really good, right? But I do feel like it's so, so niche that I'm probably just going to go ahead and slam it in it here. I don't know. Maybe that's what, that one's going to be a little bit controversial, maybe. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind on that in future, but Relentless, I think I've got a Slam Relentless in the S+. Plus, of course, it's only acquirable from things like Tournament Wins, uh, so it's quite tough to get your hands on Relentless gear, but in the longer fights in the game, Hydra in particular, just getting those extra turns at an 18% clip is, uh, yeah, obviously fantastic. Some of the best gear on my account right now is Relentless gear as well. I'm getting plenty of use out of it, and yeah, it feels extremely, extremely good when it is working throughout those longer fights. Next up, we've got Resilience Gear. This is the 10% HP and 10% defense. Uh, it's not bad. It's, it, it's fine. It's a good hop up on just like the super, super basic gear in the game. I do like that it's a two piece. So it's quite nice. It's just a, like a filler set for the early game. Um, obviously, it's got to go just behind the deflect set, which just gives just slightly better stats, slightly better effects. But uh, yeah, it has the versatility points, I think, to basically sit side by side with it because it's just a two piece. Next up, we've got Stalwart. Is this Stalwart? This isn't Stalwart. This is the resistance set, right? I think resistance is a pretty easy A tier. If you need resistance on a guy, you're going to value resistance a hell of a lot. Of course, it can make it up into S tier because we already have some pretty solid resistance options up there, which also gives some extra benefits. So it can't make it all the way up there, but A tier, if you need it, um, similar to the provoke set, right? Situationally, if you need it, uh, very, very good indeed. Retaliation. I think I'm pretty fine to slam this into A tier as well, man. Feels quite situational. It's got versatility points. I guess for that reason, it can also be bumped up just a little bit, just a little bit of a head of uh, the other sets that are also kind of situational and conditional, you know, or just like filler sets. But um, yeah, it's a good one. I feel like the only champ I really use it on right now, my entire account, is my Frozen Banshee that I'm still using in Clan Boss until I book out my Ninja, which is coming soon. Uh, by the way, I'm just waiting for the next CVC to do that. But um, yeah, feels like a pretty decent set. Next up, that brings us to Righteous, which is the plus 40 resistance and plus 10% speed uh, on this Son of a Gun. It's your resistance plus speed set. Uh, for that reason, I mean, speed is such a valuable stat. I feel like it's got to go a little bit ahead of its other resistance uh, rivals, I suppose. I think it makes its way into S tier pretty comfortably. I think it's Forge Pass, actually. Sucks a little bit, but yeah, it is really, really good. Shield set, I think we're going to go ahead and just slam that into B tier. Get some decent use out of this, I guess, in the early game until you start getting your hands on bolster stuff. Or, well, maybe you don't get your, get your hands on bolster stuff because it's Forge Pass as well, of course. And so maybe you end up using your shield set for much, much longer. If you're not paying for Forge Passes, then it's probably like an A tier um, just because you're going to get more use out of it on your account. But I think that, yeah, for the most part, it probably falls somewhere in the B range. Brings us up to Slayer. I actually really, really like my Slayer gear. That said, I don't think it makes it into S+. Plus. It's just very, very good indeed for your AoE nukas. Bonus crit damage. Uh, bonus critical strike chance. Chance to, you know, reset cooldowns on AoE skills after using them. 10 meter fill on AoE skills. I just checked and I actually just made that bit up about it resetting cooldowns on AoE skills. No, what it has is a chance to deal a second wave of damage. Like a 30% chance or something after using an AoE skill. So... Very, very good on your AoE nukas, but yeah, I don't think it competes with the absolute best of the best. Very, very good set, though, indeed. And we are now up to the final few, man, the final half dozen speed set. This is, of course, going to go to the top of the S tier, just because speed is just such a damn solid stat that even just the basic gear is going to fall just behind Divine Speed. Uh, there's not really much separating these, of course, but yeah, very, very good. This is our stalwart set, reduced damage taken from AoE attacks. Yeah, I mean, this has its uses. Of course, it's outscaled by later gear that you do get, but I think it's fine to slot this in B tier. Uh, it's not bad. Next up, stone skin. I mean, we all know where this is going, right? It's just, is there a better PvP 
set in the game. Stone Scene, of course, is also in large part responsible for the massive decline in the popularity of the uh, immunity set as well. It just does its job, but better. It does its job plus other things. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it's got to go in S+. Plus. I hate the son of a gun, by the way. I can't stand goddamn Stone Skin. Next up, we have the stun set itself, which I think goes to the top of A tier. It's quite situational, of course. What the stun set does do is allow otherwise kind of weak champions with just a lot of AoE skills to get ridiculous amounts of value and stack sort of like punching above their weight. Um, very, very good, man. I also feel like you need a good amount of stun gear because generally speaking, every single faction in the game, it's nice to have at least one like rare or epic champion in a stun set just to help out in faction walls and, and you know, secret rooms and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a happy little set, man. Maybe it actually deserves SD for that reason, but I think we're going to go ahead and sneak it in at the top of air. Supersonic is definitely an interesting one. So if you get like a full piece set of Supersonic, you get 2% 10 meter fill for every buff in enemy places, right? So if you're in arena, you know, an enemy pops a couple of buffs in their entire team, that can easily end up being like 16% 10 meter fill just instantly on one of your champs. You can put this on like a disruptor style champ. We've seen people use this on guys like our mans in arena and then he just throws a huge spanner in the works in the middle of an enemy team's setup so even though you're slower than the enemy team because you get that 10 meter fill on a disruptive champ like our mans man it's got to go into sd what am i even putting it there for yeah you just throw a huge spanner in the works of what your enemy is trying to get done and so it's very very unique it's kind of difficult to grade because it's so situational but i do think that it is situationally awesome next up we've got swift parry 18% speed on a four piece, uh, also 30% crit damage and a 50% chance of blocking or rather triggering an unkillable buff on your champ if they would otherwise die in that round. Okay, so it's quite an interesting set. It is quite niche. It would be nice if your champ just wasn't dying in the first place. But then again, it's only 30% crit damage for a four piece, man. I don't know, like, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I feel like it probably goes somewhere in the A tier, maybe around here, maybe a little bit ahead. I don't know, somewhere around there. I don't know. Again, it's just another one of those sets that, as far as nukas go, uh, it just feels like it's just outshone by the stuff above it. Next up, we've got the Toxic set. I have kind of feel like this goes somewhere in the bottom of C tier. Very, very situational indeed. It only applies weak version of Poison, which isn't great. Uh, yeah. Just very, very situational stuff. Next up, we've got Untouchable, which is basically the same as the Immunity set. However, it also gives plus 40 resistance, I believe. And yeah, I mean, can it really go anywhere but like the bottom of S tier? Probably either the bottom of S tier or the very top of A. We'll put it in the very, very top of A or like the top-ish of A tier just to balance things out a little bit more. Real no, what am I doing, man? This is realistically an S tier piece, right? Surely it's got to be. And finally, we have Zeal, which I think probably goes somewhere towards, again, uh, the top-ish area of A tier. Um, it's a two-piece set. Same as also, like, plus crit damage. Uh, however, you also get a little bit of extra bonus damage based on how much HP the champion with the Zeal set has. Definitely not a bad set, but I do feel like it just struggles a little bit to compete, again, with the S and the S plus tier action. And alright man, that's it. That's the completed tier list, man. Do you guys agree? Am I way, way off with some of these sets? I feel like maybe I might be. I feel like it's interesting, man. I feel like, depending on where your account is at the time that you're watching this video, you might just have completely different opinions. If you're a super, super late game player, you especially might have some very, very different opinions on these uh, sets. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Alright man. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you're looking to start a new Raid Shadow Legends account, they do so using my promo link down below at the top of the video description box. Doing so will kickstart your account with a free copy of Tagore, Epic Support Champion, as soon as your account hits level 15, and the Rector Drath when you hit level 25. It's the best goddamn beginner promo link. Go on. Thanks for watching now. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we're going to catch all of y'all just a tad bit later, man.